name is Noam Chomsky. I'm a retired professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where I've been for 65 years. I'm going to talk to you about generative grammar. So, if you are capable of producing well-formed sentences and rejecting ill-formed sentences, this is referred to as generative grammar. In generative grammar, we look at three elements, and that would be the sentence, competence, and components. Now, for sentence, this syntactic theory is that sentences in grammar consist of a list of well-formed sentences of a language. However, such a list will be too long since there are infinitely many sentences in English. So, two principles are responsible for, for this non-finite character of natural language. On sentence, we look at two elements, the creativity and recursion. On creativity, uh, we have that grammatical sentences certainly do not only apply to sentences that we have here before, but also to new sentences. So this creativity is an ability. So this ability is referred to as creativity. Any native speaker is capable of understanding and producing new sentences. So language cannot simply be learned by imitation, rather languages are acquired by principles of abstraction. And some linguists call this, well, like Chomsky, they argue that these principles are innate. Now on recursion, we have that natural languages typically, typically allow constructions that involve repetitive occurrence of elements. This phenomenon is defined as recursion. So with a very simple rule system, the recursive character of natural language can be described. On this, we have noun phrase coordination, adjectival iteration recursion, and prepositional phrase attachment. We're going to see an example for each one. So we're going to start with Noun phrase coordination. Now we have adjectival iteration recursion. And last we have prepositional phrase attachment. The rule on sentence about creativity and recursion, the rule is quite simple. Even though the number of sentences is infinite, not all sentences are used in human conversation and find their way into grammatical theory. Now, in the third component about generative grammar, we have competence. Competence. So syntacticians define a specific level of attraction referred to as competence. As native speakers of the language, we are able to make numerous intuitive judgments about our language, and we don't need to consult grammar books. By virtue of knowing a language, we know what sentences are fine and, what, and that some sentences are wrong. This is also referred as competence, so a native speaker competence. And for this, we also have some examples. We have that some sentences are grammatically correct. They have the typical word order, but they are semantically at least questionable. We will call this semantically odd. We're going to see an example about that. This sentence is grammatically correct, but semantically wrong. It has a subject, a verb, and an object, but it doesn't make sense unless it was a fairy tale. 
On a second example, we have that there are some sentences that are ungrammatical because something is missing. Here we have ungrammatical, something missing. John put the car. This sentence requires a location or an obligatory adverbial like where, which would be where we put the car. So something is missing. On example number three, we have that some sentences are ungrammatical that the word order is not in line of what we know about the English word order. We're going to see the example. On grammatical, wrong word order. Put John in the garage in the car. Word order is not in line with what we know about the English word order for present day English. Now, the third part of generative grammar about components, we have two components that constitute the core of generative grammar and interact and that they interact with one another. These are the phrase structure component or the PS component and the lexicon. The PS component or phrase structure component, its central task is the structural description of all well-formed sentences of a language. To achieve this goal, we need a well-defined rule system that combines all categories into, su into successively larger units. For this, we need a syntactic tree. We're going to see an example of a syntactic tree. A syntactic tree is the visual manifestation of all the syntactic rules. This rule system consists of the so of the so-called phrase structure rules, which is the technique of analyzing sentences. Now the lexicon, this one interacts with the phrase structure component and contains information about the lexemes of a language. This includes the phonological, morphological, syntactic, and semantic aspects. So together, the phrase structure component and the lexicon, they constitute the core of any modern generative grammar. In summary, generative grammar not only provides a description of the structure of a language, but it seeks to explain, among others, the following phenomena. Language processing how humans understand and produce speech. Language acquisition, what goes into an infant's mind when he or she acquires his or her mother tongue. And language variation, why do languages change? Why is, what is going on under the surface of language variation? As a result of this discussion, it seems acceptable to claim that language is like an instinct. We acquire it and use it subconsciously. The core of this process is what many linguists refer to as universal grammar. A universal grammar is a theory in linguistics, usually credited to Noam Chomsky, proposing that the ability to learn grammar is hardwired into the brain, just like we saw, just like we already saw in generative grammar. Now we're going to see some examples about sentence analysis by looking at the syntax of deep structure and surface structure sentences. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, the deep structure. The deep structure means that we have the same deep structure but different surface structure. We can take deep structure as the same idea that can be inferred from different sentences. So that means we have the same idea explained or expressed in different ways. Like in here we have an active sentence and here we have a passive sentence. So we're going to talk about the number one. You push the uh, you push push the chair. So we have the sentence. From the sentence, we're going to take the the noun phrase. 
And from the noun phrase, we're going to take out the pronoun. And in this case, the pronoun is you. Then we go to the verb phrase. From the verb phrase, you, we, we start from push. And so we have the verb, which in this case is push. And another noun phrase, which is, uh, which has the termina D. And the noun, which in this case is chair. And let's go to the sentence number two. The chair is pushed by you. Again, we we'll start with the sentence, which is the whole sentence. And we start with the uh, noun phrase, which in this case we just have the termina. And we have a noun. In this case, D and chair. We also have the verb phrase, which is component by the verb is push. And the pronoun, which in this case is by you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 